introduction again. Um, um, I'm Arfan. Um, I'm going to talk about one of my uh, earliest projects during my PhD, which is uh, about measuring support in phylogenetic analysis from uh, genomic data. And um, the dramatic reduction in the cost of uh, sequencing, sequencing has made the um, genome sequencing affordable to uh, many people, many labs. And so um, this led to um, an explosive um, growth of sequence data, gene and, or whole genomes on public repositories. Um, this growth uh, provides both um, opportunities and also uh, challenges. As opportunity, we, are, we hope that we could infer the evolution relationship between different organisms. But the first challenge is that with, with this huge amount of data, how could we uh, model uh, the, the evolution and infer the phylogenies or infer the evolution relationships? But this is not the only uh, challenge that we are facing. We also um, face more biological related challenges, which is if you look at different parts of the genome, the evolutionary history might be different. Um, from one part of the genome to the other one. We call the um, um, evolutionary history of different parts of the genome as gene trees, and, and we model them as, as trees, we call them gene trees, and then we have another tree which shows the evolution relationship of a species um, um, as, as a whole, which is, which is called the species tree. Uh, now, uh, the biological um, causes um, and, and the biological differences are caused by real biological processes like incomplete lineage sorting, duplication and loss, and horizontal gene transfer. Uh, for, for the purpose of this talk and this method, I'm going to focus on the incomplete lineage sorting and, li and a little bit talk about it in my future slides, uh, but um, I'm not going to talk about the, the other two. So uh, how do we uh, think about these discordances? We can model these and address um, these discordances by using a hierarchical model and using a two-step approach. So the first parameter for this approach is the species tree and the branch lengths, and then using the, the um, gene evolution models, we could, we could um, um, in generate uh, the, the gene trees and then using those gene trees and using the sequence evolution models, we could generate the sequences. But whenever we are doing the um, inferences and ac acknowledging the discordances among gene trees and the species tree, one scalable method that has emerged to create phylogeny from sequence data is a two-step approach where we first have to infer the gene trees given the, um, the uh, sequence evolution models and then we can uh, infer the species tree uh, given the um, gene evolution, uh, given the, um, sorry, the sequence evolution models, and uh, then the gene, uh, infer the, the species tree given the um, gene evolution models. Uh, the first, uh, for the first step, which is inferring the gene trees from the, um, the sequences, decades of research has done. And there are plenty of tools that can infer gene trees from sequences efficiently. But uh, for the second step, we still need uh, four methods. Um, one of those methods that could handle a huge amount of data and is pretty popular is Astral, which is, an, again, another summary method to summarize the gene trees to infer the uh, species tree. And the input to Astral is a set of um, gene trees unrooted gene trees, and the output will be a, um, an unrooted species tree. Uh, and, and Astro tries to maximize some, some optimization problem to find the uh, species uh, tree. So one of the main tasks in any phylogenetic analysis is the evaluation of the support uh, for the inferences. Here, I'm borrowing one uh, biological example regarding the evolution of the land plants to determine what is the sister to land plants. Um, there are different um, and contradicting uh, hypotheses. One of them is that uh, Kera is the, uh, is the sister to land plants. And um, another hypothesis, for example, is that 
Zygna mentalis is the um, is a sister to land plants. And um, recently, in 2014, Wicked et al. Uh, published a paper um, supporting the first one, and another paper also recently published 1,000 plant transcriptomes um, and phylogenomies of, of uh, green plants. Again, supporting the uh, the first um, um, topology and, and hypothesis. So. So now uh, we are not only interested in developing methods to in infer the species trees from gene trees in a scalable fashion and, and considering inconsistencies prevalent uh, in the genomic data, we are also interested in developing methods to evaluate and measure the quality of our um, inferences. Uh, this is because we never have act direct access to the um, true phylogeny. Um, our inferences are based on um, noisy, limited data. And we need to judge, uh, because we have multiple hypotheses, we need to judge in the light of the statistical support. Um, just as another motivation to show that um, computing the support is, not, uh, is, is an important task in any phylogenetic analysis, you could look at the a uh, number of citations of um, one of the methods to measure the support for um, phylogenies, which is the Buddhist strapping. And this paper is um, cited more than 37,000 times since 1985, and is ranked 41 in the top uh, 100 most cited papers of all the time. So uh, again, to address this issue and, and, and consider that we are taking in, uh, into account the discordances um, between the gene trees and the species tree, this is not just uh, doing uh, simple bootstrapping. So, uh, and, and simple measuring the support, we have a specific problem of um, inferring the species tree uh, from the gene trees. One of the existing methods to measure the support is full Bayesian estimation of all parameters, which, which requires MCDMC sampling of um, all the parameters that we have, including um, species tree topology, species tree branch links, um, gene tree parameters, um, gene tree branch links, so on and so forth. And, and this is computationally intensive um, and, and slow for more than 20 species. The other solution is multi-locus bootstrapping. It is computationally more tractable, but it's still a slow for 200 uh, species. So one of the issues with multi-locus bootstrapping is the running time, um, basically, concerns. So, but how do we do multi-locus bootstrapping? Um, um, so we, we do this by generating multiple pseudo replicates of the original alignment that we have. So here I have, I'm showing you on the left, an alignment with K genes. I subsampled with replacement from the um, columns of the um, genes to create M replicates. From there, I, I infer the gene trees from each replicate and I, I run the um, species tree estimation for each of those. And at the end, I summarized them over the um, inferred species tree that I was, or hypothesis species tree that I was interested in to see how, how much it is supported uh, um, by, by repeating this uh, procedure. But the question is that, is this um, a good measure of support for species trees or not? And papers published addressing some issues um, uh, regarding the uh, multi-locus bootstrapping. More specifically, um, bootstrapping for multiple genes has a tendency to underestimate or overestimate the support. So low support branches are um, correct too often, and uh, which means that it might have, it might has, um, it might have high false negative. And high support, uh, um, high support branches are false too often, which, which means we might have high false positive rate. And one justification for this is that we are inferring the gene trees from limited um, amount of data. Now that we are doing multi-locus bootstrapping, we are fed by, by doing that um, 
sampling with replacement, we are also limiting even the amount of information that we have further. And so we are uh, introducing biases in, in our uh, inferences. Uh, this is not something new. Uh, the, these short, shortcomings are known for decades and raised previously. And, um, and, and previously, these, these are um, theoretically and empirically uh, mentioned previously. So what is the problem that, that I have right now? The problem is that I have K gene trees and one species tree. Uh, gene trees and, and species trees can be discordant due to only ILS. I'm assuming that I don't have any, any sort of gene tree error. And I'm going to talk about what is incomplete linear sorting in my next slide. But what I'm interested in is that for, for each branch uh, B of the species tree, what is the probability of B is the true species tree given the, the gene trees that I have? But what is really the, the um, incomplete linear sorting? So here I'm showing you guys um, the species tree in a thick, using a thick um, black tree. And then each dot shows a, um, an individual or um, a different version of the gene. You could track um, the lineages through the um, history. And then if two of these lineages merge together, we, call, we, we say that they coalesce. And, um, and, and, and there is a chance that they don't, for example, here in this example, uh, um, they didn't coalesce within that time. So in this case, there is a possibility that one of the lineages coalesce with the um, sister lineage. And, and, and ends in um, discordance in the, uh, between the gene tree and the true species tree. And this is called incomplete linear sorting. How do we model incomplete linear sorting? We use multi-species coalescent model, which is a statistical model of um, um, ILS, and uh, is a way of, um, uh, that connects um, actually um, traditional population genetics with with phylogenetics. And the species tree defines the probability distribution over gene trees. And the species tree based off of this model is identifiable from the distribution on gene trees, which means that as the number of true gene trees goes to infinity, this is a theoretical um, um, uh, property. So as the number of gene tree, true gene trees goes to infinity, we are able to infer the true species tree with probability one. So, but based off of this uh, multi-species coalescent model and considering only four species for a quarter of the species, uh, the unrooted species tree topology has at least one third probability of matching a gene tree. And the other two uh, topologies are equally probable. This is not my work. This is published previously by Allman et al. And here, for example, consider uh, that species tree, that's high, high hypothetical species tree with branch lengths 0.1. And uh, the expected um, uh, frequency to observe that topology in, 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 inside the gene trees is given in, the, um, in, the, um, in this formula. So theta 1 equals 1 minus 2 third e to the negative d. This is an exponential uh, um, function. And then the other two are equiprobable. And if you do the math, it bec they become one third e to the negative d, one third e to the negative d. For the specific case of d equals 0.1, the um, theta one equals 40% or 0.4. Theta two and theta three are the same and they are 0.3. Okay. The other important thing is that the most frequent gene tree based off of multi-species coalescent model and for only four species is the same as the most likely species tree. Okay. Now consider again the, the same exam, example that I was talking about. So based off of the theory, you would expect that, and, and, and if you knew the true species tree, you would expect observing the first topology, which matches the species tree 40% of the time, and the second one 30%, and the third one 30% um, again. But we are inferring these um, gene trees 
from the limited data. So, and, and if you do that, you, you would, for example, here is an example. Uh, you would observe the F1, which is the same as the species tree, one too many times, F2 another number, F3 another number. And, and for this example, the most frequent gene tree matches the true species tree. So we were able to actually infer the true species tree. But um, how do we look into the um, support is that we are interested to see what is the probability that the true uh, species tree had more than one third uh, probability of being observed inside the gene trees given those frequencies. And we, we, we hope that this number to be large because uh, we were able to um, match the and find the species tree. Here is another example. Um, next time we infer the, again, gene trees based off of, um, again, limited data, and you would uh, see F1 equals 100. And in this example, F3 is the most frequent one. This is not the same as true species tree, unfortunately, but we hope that the probability that theta three, which was our inferred um, species tree greater than one third, given those frequencies, uh, becomes a small number so that we have less um, support, uh, less um, support in terms of like um, um, supporting that hypothesis. Uh, so the solution, again, another um, um, form of the um, problem that I'm looking for. So the probability that inferred the species tree is the same as the true species tree, given those frequencies is the same as probability that theta one greater than one third given those frequencies. And this could, this is a posterior probability and using the Bayes rule, you could further um, rewrite it as, um, the integral from one third to one of the likelihood multiplied by a prior distribution and divided by probability of the data, which is the probability of F star, but that could be simply uh, computed by marginalizing over all the three um, possible topologies. For computing, for being able to compute this uh, posterior probability, we needed a uh, um, well-behaved um, prior so, and, and we used Yule model and based off of the birth only process, which is a commonly used tree model, the, here is the probability of theta J equals T, which is, which is given as follow. But uh, this becomes the conjugate to our likelihood. So it, it helps us in terms of like um, computing this posterior probability analytically. And um, in the absence, another um, assumption that we made was that in the absence of any prior knowledge, all three topologies are assumed equiprobable. So the probability of theta one greater than one third, theta two greater than one third, and theta three greater than one third are the same and is one third. Right? Um, one thing again to remember is that so far, whatever I talked was only for a quarter of a species. These are for four species, not more than four species. And uh, again, further simplifying this uh, equation, we were able to compute this probability using this H function, but the H function could be also computed using the beta function and incomplete uh, and normalize incomplete uh, beta function. So, but so far, as I mentioned, I, I was talking about four species. What about more than four species? Uh, with more than four species, most likely gene tree is not the same as the species tree. And computing the posterior becomes um, too complex to um, analytically co compute it. So we came up with an approximate solution um, where we map problem with more than four species to four species using simplifying assumptions. So um, here I'm showing you one, one species tree, again, hypothetical species tree and the branch. Um, so this defines a quadripartition, which means that it divides the tree into four parts. Our, and and one, of the, um, one of our assumptions is called locality assumption, which means that we assume that each of those um, clusters around this quadripartition are true. Um, we are not talking of taking um, um, into account their um, interrelationships 
and the resolution within each of those clusters. But we just say that, okay, A and B are on one side, C is on the other side, D and E are on the other side, and F, G, H are uh, on the other side. So now we have, again, a quartet, and so we have three possibilities. So we were able to map the problem of having more than four species to the problem of having um, only four species. Um, but another challenge for us was how, how do we compute these quarter frequencies um, efficiently? Um, the brute force algorithm is to count all the quartets in gene trees and average them, which is of n to the four. You would expect that you have to pick one species from each side of this quarter partition. And in, in the extreme, it becomes um, um, n to the four times k. Um, and our, our algorithm is based on bottom of traverse all of all the input gene trees, and we were able to compute this, um, these frequencies in O of n squared k, which is much, much more uh, tractable than O of n to the four uh, times k. And, and to just give you, um, for example, an example, we were able to compute uh, local posterior probability for 10,000 species of um, uh, bacteria published uh, previously. Um, so experiments, um, so in order to evaluate local posterior pr pr probability, we did um, simulations and um, empirical analysis. For simulations, we have access to true species tree. Um, and for, um, for um, biological experiments, we use a data set with 48 species of um, birds. And um, in these experiments, we intentionally violated our simplifying assumptions, which means uh, locality assumptions might be, assumption might be wrong. And the other assumption was that the only source of discordance between the gene trees and the species tree is ILS. And so we have gene tree error um, to see, to, to be able to compare um, our method with multi-locus bootstrap. So again, to describe how do we evaluate uh, these uh, um, experiments. Uh, so remember this example that I provided previously and the numbers. Um, so we consider a branch as true if its local posterior probability is greater than a threshold. So if, if I go and compute the local PP for this scenario, it becomes 0.97. And so this branch is a false negative for all thresholds more than 97 and true positive for all thresholds less than 97. And if I go and do the same thing, thing for the second scenario, the local PP is 0.51. And, and so this is a false positive uh, for all thresholds less than uh, 51, 0.51, and true negative for all thresholds more than uh, 0 0.51. And for evaluation, we will use ROC curves for com comparison of uh, multi-locus bootstrapping and local posterior probability, uh, where recall, which, which, which shows recall versus false positive rate. And recall means the percentage of all true branches that have support greater than a threshold. And false positive rate means that the percentage of all false branches that have support greater than a threshold. And here is the uh, result. On the x-axis, I'm showing you false positive rate. On the y-axis, I'm showing you re uh, recall. Color defines different methods. MLBS means multi-locus bootstrapping. Local PP is my method. And you would see that we, we get a better um, ROC curve, and we have better results in terms of ROC curve. Uh, just notice that I um, um, need to emphasize that um, in this experiment, we, again, violated all of our assumptions. And interestingly, this is a case where we greatly violated our assumptions. So if, if we decrease the amount of gene tree error, you would see that multi-locus bootstrapping and local posterior probability merge to, 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 to each other, have similar performances in terms of ROC care. But for higher levels of gene tree error, um, local posterior probability outperforms multi-locus bootstrapping. We were able to, again, um, to, to create this because we had access to true species tree, right? And, um, okay, so um, 
remember this biological example I borrowed from the evolution of um, land plants. So we had it all published a paper, as I mentioned before, using 100, about 100 taxa and 400 genes. And inside their data, the, uh, the topology where Zygnematalis is the, the sister to land plants was observed more than 50% of the time. But the bootstrap support was 80%. Oh, and, and local posterior probability was 100%, which means that um, uh, local um, local PP, this this topology is more um, justifiable based off of um, local posterior probability. So, um, in summary, I introduced we introduced a fast and accurate method of computing the support. This this uh, method is implemented in Astral, uh, which is a leading summary method out there. is uh, pretty popular and implemented in Java. And since this is um, published, it's being widely adopted by the research communities. I cited more than 237 times since 2016. Um, and, we showed, um, and, and we showed the usage of this, this, this uh, metric with um, simulations and also um, em uh, empirical data. Uh, it's, it's, it was used in, in the analysis of many biological data sets, for example, spiders, starfish, mammals, plants, and so on and so forth, and has in, inspired uh, the development of similar quartet based measures by um, other groups and other um, uh, research labs. These are some of the examples of the pa papers cited um, local PP and used local PP. And I would um, Thanks, Siavash, my advisor, and also NSF for funding this uh, project. And um, thank you. Thank you very much, Elfan, for the interesting talk. Of course. Um, so now we will uh, go to questions. So um, are there questions that uh, attendees would like to ask. Okay, uh, while people are uh, thinking about the question, I would, I would have a question for you. So, um, so this method actually to uh, compute the local branch support based on quartet frequency. So you apply it, you, like you said, it was uh, implemented uh, in Astral, right? Uh, uh, to reconstruct uh, species trees from uh, gene trees. Uh, have you uh, thought of an extension of the use of, of this approach actually to um, to recompute simultaneously gene trees, multiple gene trees and species trees? So uh, right now uh, we are talking a lot about the such methods that would be able to reconstruct everything, all gene trees and species trees for a set of genomes. What would be um, an application? So that's an interesting question, and that's actually one idea that we had to uh, to compute uh, the species trees and the gene trees um, say simultaneously. Um, but that's just an idea. We are still working. I know that my advisor is still working on that, and and so uh, yeah, that's a good actually um, idea suggestion. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. So, um, are there questions? I don't see question in the chat. Um, I have another question, still related to the one I, I just talked about. So, actually, um, your method allows to compute the branch supports for space history that has been computed, computed using a, a summary uh, method, right? Uh, so, my question is in the other direction. Uh, because the question of um, obtaining also accurate gene trees in, is important, so it's uh, well, it's something important when you want to compute the space history with the gene trees. But it also happens sometimes that you already have the space history, and you want to compute gene trees, uh, particular gene trees for from this set of genome. In the other direction, is it possible to correct the gene trees based on your on your on your approach? 
Uh, I never um, worked on on this particularly. Like um, I never worked on um, this question, but that's a, a great point. Um, uh, I think again, it's related to your first question, which means that jointly inferring the gene trees and the species tree in, in the same time, and um, there is possible, there are possibilities. Uh, but I haven't like addressed those and I didn't work on that um, research question, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so questions. So we have um, a question from Leonid. Uh, I don't know if Leonid wants to ask his question himself. Is that I'm not seeing that, so. Is it in chat or? It's in chat, yeah. So okay. the question from Leonid is, can some of your methods apply to phylogenetic networks instead of trees? Uh, apply to phylogenetic networks instead of trees. So we um, particularly um, you designed this metal method for uh, phylogenies. But if you convert, um, because you could see networks as, again, trees, right? So uh, you have to first, um, add like dummy nodes to represent um, to represent um, nodes for for going from the networks to a tree and that's uh, that might be a, a way to compute the uh, support but this this method as I mentioned is designed for phylogenies that are tree like right so I didn't I made this assumption that that my phylogeny is a tree not a network. Okay, thank you for the question and for the answer. Um, you need to say thanks. So mm -hmm. uh, do we have other questions from attendees? Okay, so um, uh, no more questions. So uh, we will uh, thank uh, Erfan again for, for, for his there talk. There is one, sorry. Or if there is one coming. Yeah. I'm going to assume that all trees are binary trees. Okay, so um, for local PP, it assumes it allows for polytomies. Um, as I said, it will go through the each of the branches of the species tree. And also you might have polytomies inside your gene trees as well. So, so it could account for polytomies as well. Of course. Over questions? Okay, here is another question. Uh, can, can it be used when doing species delimitation? Um, so I'm not so sure what is this specific um, problem here. But uh, I think um, recently, I'm not so sure about the current status of the tool. But I remember that um, people from the from our lab was looking into the um, computing the support for um, for these cases as well. You have um, and and there is this this paper that may, maybe might be helpful. Sorry, I have a supporting uh, because sorry, I'm I'm not um, available for the current uh, status of the that of the. Um, of the work, but yeah, the, um, sorry, again. For the latest um, updates, please take a look into this uh, paper, the species tree estimation using astral practical consideration. Um, regarding this, this is a specific application that you have for a species documentation. <laughs> 